the return of one of the hardest runners the NFL's ever seen. Oh my God, Marshawn Lynch is back, and I couldn't be more excited. Bobby, what was your reaction the minute you heard that Marshawn Lynch, of all people, after we spent a year talking about Gronk every week maybe coming out of retirement, that Marshawn Lynch, of all people, is the one they've coaxed back into a uniform? Well, first of all, I was trying to figure out, well, was Santa driving around tonight, or was that actually Doc Brown in the DeLorean from like, 2014. Fair hey, question. Ro- Robert Turbin, Marshawn Lynch, <laughs> let's slide on out in your Seattle uniforms. You guys are ready to go. What year is it again? Oh, don't worry. Five uh, years ago. It's all uh, good. But I just was thinking, you know, and we talked a little bit about this before. For guys that take time off, like especially if you've had a longer career, like usually you get done, that first year is about like physical wellness. And when I say that, usually that means just like chilling out for a while, maybe losing a little weight. Um, but really not doing any of the things that you needed to do to be able to play football, which is hard on your body. Like, I don't know if Marshawn Lynch has ever been what I would call a, quote, like, big-time workout guy. Not a gym rat? Not a, not, not a gym rat from a sense like he's staying in the weight room just grinding all the time, always wants his body to be in the best physical condition. I mean, I don't know if he takes his Skittles and then separates all the green ones out to be more like Tom Brady to ingest Puts them like, in the pill container. Yeah, like, that. like yeah. You know, Tom Brady's drinking the green juice smoothies. Marshawn Lynch, he's only eating the green Skittles. That that would probably be the the safest equivalent that you could make it to how much he cares about his fitness. I think, but I, I'm just worried. Like, yeah, if he can play, he can help us. Well, the dude hasn't done anything since like the middle of last season, and I I just have a hard time envisioning him being like in peak physical condition to help you. <laughs> If we need to saddle up for five or six, seven times on this drive and give you the ball and pound it down the field and let everybody know who we are and what we're about, Marshawn Lynch gives that ability to the Seattle Seahawks. And what that does, it elevates the play of the offensive line. It it inspires the defense. Russell Wilson's going to have a little more pep in his step. DK Metcalf, a guy who grew up watching Marshawn Lynch play like those guys are going to now have a little bit elevated like sense of purpose about who they are and how their team operates. Yeah, it's and I, I'm here for the emotional uplift because by everyone you talk to that's played with Marshawn Lynch loves this guy. Like you always hear people singing the praises of what he means in a locker room, how he's a lot smarter than people give him credit for, what how what you know <laughs> what what a help he is to younger players, all these different things that come up with it. My hope is... Has anyone been besmirching his intelligence publicly? No, I don't think so. Okay, like smarter than people thought he was. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess I don't know. People always see the guy who's run through a mother bleeper's face and, you know, the Skittles and everything else and probably you know, have assumed one thing when everyone always says, like, Marshawn Lynch is a really intelligent guy. Marshawn Lynch has helped young guys kind of learn how to go about things financially when they get to the NFL, so... You're right. Maybe not. Maybe not as many people publicly besmirching. I don't know why I phrased it like that. But it's okay. You know, we all we all make mistakes in all this. The mistake <laughs> I'm hoping that they don't make, by the way, is that they use this. And Brian Schottheimer, their offensive coordinator, is a guy who wants to live on the run first. Two of your backfield options are now gone. You have a quarterback who is going to be a Hall of Famer, who is one of the best in the NFL. Let him win you the games with the guys that are healthy on the outside, with Tyler Lockett, with DK Metcalf. Don't get the nostalgia bug that we've all gotten and decide to hand the ball off to Marshawn and Robert Turbin 25-plus times a game. Well, and here's the thing. Bill Parcells used to always say this about quarterbacks. Like, we need you, are you going to start this guy? Like, you can't just dial 1-800 quarterback, and they're going to send you a new and improved model. Who else were the Seahawks going to be able to realistically sign right now that would be able to provide them a spark and provide them some continuity in the running game? Like These might have been the only guys out there. And you know what? So you got to bring them in. You're not finding 1,500 yards of production right now just hanging out on week 16 like, oh, hey, no one else is willing to sign you, but we're going to go get you. Like Those guys don't exist. So they went after the only guys they could. Their team that's in the playoffs – Potentially, I don't know if you're going to call him a Super Bowl contender, but you look at the Seahawks and said, hey, if they made it to the NFC Championship game, I would not be shocked. Absolutely got a chance in all that one. Going to be very exciting one way or another. Like The entertainment value of the NFC playoff run for the Seahawks just went up tenfold with those guys right now. So, And ultimately, you may get him diving into the end zone and making some unbelievable gestures to the yes. Cameron crowd, and that's something we could all use a little bit more of in our life. Hi, everyone. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, more analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. We'll see you there.